Why did I spend 80k a year at a top engineering school just to leave engineering? Excellent question. Thank you for your patience for this long awaited video where I will discuss why I have left chemical engineering to pursue a role in consulting and will later get an MBA. I'll also talk about why I didn't choose a master's in chemi or PhD, and I will explain my master plan for how I'm going to return back into the STEM world. I don't know how people do this. So to understand this fully, first let's go into why I chose chemical engineering. I've always loved math and I wanted to do something to help the world, as cheesy as it sounds, in medicine or the environment. I've always been very passionate about the environment specifically, as you can tell from my videos on the metaverse. I chose chemi because because it seemed to combine those and be versatile post-graduation. But then two experiences kind of cemented in me that maybe it wasn't the right direction for me to achieve such goals. Caveat to basically this whole entire video, choosing between consulting and engineering was a super tough decision to me. And because this is about why I chose consulting, naturally it's gonna sound more negative towards engineering. So please don't let my skewed perspective affect you too much. I truly love STEM, hence going to Caltech. My family are all made up of engineers and I have so much respect for my friends who are becoming doctors and scientists. I'm fascinated by technology and that's why I plan to return back to STEM like you'll see at the end of the video. Also, consulting is probably why I sound so tired in this video, so there's a con. So first, my internship. I worked at a biotechnology company. Although I enjoyed it, I think it was more so because of the people and the lab environment, but if I were to do the lab work day in and day out, it's quite repetitive. And in fact, my mentor said that she feels I would get bored and there's not that much growth that you can do there because it's an essentially the same kinds of things you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis which is a job to some extent the second thing was research i did think i was going to do a phd because the idea is higher education means a brighter future that's kind of what we're taught is the correlation but i conducted research in dr francis arnold's lab and although it was fun and exciting it was also repetitive as most things are i suppose whether it's a job or in research and hearing people people who also have the same perspective, just dreading going into lab, running the same experiments 10 times again. It just seemed like something I didn't want to do. Doctor it. That's not my plan now. <laughs> I am interested in a variety of different things. I like jumping around, maybe a little too much, and being involved in different activities, different projects. And so I didn't see myself doing something that deep, focusing on one thing for five more years. I would go a little crazy because that's just me. That's just me. And finally, I found consulting. When my friend first told me about it, I was like, why would you waste your chemi degree to go into business? Consulting sounds so arbitrary, but I looked into it and it's much more fast paced. You have a high learning curve and each project is pretty short. They vary from like three weeks to three months. And so you're getting exposure to a variety of different industries, which I found really exciting and suits my personality. I found that not only could I learn a lot in the beginning, but it's more of a continual learning that we're getting those soft skills that will be useful to anything I will decide to pursue in the future. I also spoke with people I found on LinkedIn who also left STEM to go into consulting and they kind of have the same perspective that I did, that it was a great starting job and you can just get a lot out of it. So I wanted that breadth and more dynamic kind of work experience. I realized I want to be a leader and I enjoy working with people. So in my past experiences, I realized that I'm always looking to create more value and help more people. Oh, you know, I consult but most of the time I add value. In a way such that I'm initiating things and being proactive about new ideas. I've also tended to be the one to lead study groups and create a schedule to initiate events and search out different opportunities that my friends can do together. And I've also joined entrepreneurship club at Caltech. I joined an accelerator in Edinburgh, which opened my eyes to the world of being a leader in technology by creating something new and being a business leader to make maybe propel a new idea forward. I work with the most energy when I'm working with other people. I wanted that to be an experience that I continuously have in a consulting role where we are working in teams and have a lot of discussion. I wanted more visible impact. I wanted to understand how the world works, why technology is changing our lives so much and the way that business and money is making the world a better or a worse place. And so I want to get that experience through consulting to then in the future, maybe have a better idea of what ways I can truly make a bigger positive difference. 
It sounds quite lofty, but I think from a young age, I've always felt like I wanted to do something to help people since even on a smaller scale, when I help people in class with their homework and stuff like that, I just really felt happy. And I think my favorite ideas are those where I know that I'm gonna help more people. On my music YouTube channel, I was super passionate about just the little things that I could do that would make a great impact to people's lives, to their happiness and understanding of music. And I could see those through comments, which propelled me more in this direction because I never felt like I was doing any work for that YouTube channel because I just had this fire in me that would just not dim. In business and consulting, I feel like I have a greater, more direct impact. So. In engineering, we are doing one little part of the process. We're like one little cog in the machine. It's a very important cog in the machine. It can't operate without that. But, but we're many degrees away from where that actual impact is. And sometimes we can't see it as much. Not only that, but with the small processes, we're getting more deep into it and specialized on a day-to-day. -day. When I was working in my internships, I don't see how fulfilling that was. Again, this is all my opinion and perspective on what suits me. I I love engineering and STEM, but to work all those hours per week, I found that maybe it was more important to pick something where I feel more of a fulfillment in my terms. With this channel, I feel like I'm very excited about helping you guys from day in and day out. And I was involved in some college panels where I helped other students around the world just understand what the process is like better such that they can make their futures just brighter, you know? And that was very satisfying as well as when I created a program to help people in my previous internships. People didn't tell me to make this program, but I saw this kind of an issue and then people started using it and telling me how much time they've saved by using this program. It made me super happy. And these little experiences, when you step back and reflect on the joy it brings you and the kind of fulfillment it brings you, then you want to kind of remember them. So then you can pick a role that tries to encapsulate those as much as possible, which I found was consulting to start. In business, I feel like if I lead a team and push forward a certain idea or project, then I can see a more visible impact when creating strategies and performing diligences for large companies and interacting with the executives. I literally see them say, wow, this is super useful. We're gonna use this plan. I just think that's amazing being only a 23 year old right out of college, right? To have that kind of effect in what's seemingly a large scale of a business. I can still use those problem solving skills in chemical engineering such that I'm exposed to various different industries while collaborating with people and making that kind of impact I want. As far as my master plan of returning back into the STEM world, because yes, I also feel like if I just stay purely in business, I am wasting my Caltech degree. No quotes, literally wasting. <laughs> That's why I plan to go to MIT Sloan. I'm hope to go there to combine my technical background and skills and those kinds of thinking and interest in technology with business. And being in that kind of environment, maybe I can collaborate with people in the greater MIT community. Ultimately, after the MBA, take a leadership role back in a big tech or tech <laughs> startup or biotechnology company. I hope this makes sense and doesn't influence your choices as much. I think the goal of this is just to show you the kind of thought process I went through to maybe hopefully make a better decision about what I want to do long-term. Basically taking all the pieces from my past experiences, reflect and deciding that it's okay to pivot. It's okay to change your mind, but just still remember and use those pieces of your past to move yourself further. Thanks very much. Leave a comment if you have a question and I'll see you next time. Bye.